This week, episode 311 of Stogie Geeks, Drew and I interview Ram Rodriguez from Tabacalera El Artista. If you don't know about them, you sure will find out what they blend. A lot of interesting smokes. Uh, first time appearance here for Ram, so we get to hear about how he got started and what the company's all about. Super excited about that. And in our second segment, Drew and I talk about the sticks of the week. It all happens. You can follow follow along with us on stogiegeeks.com forward slash 311. Uh, happens to be a good band, too. Anyway. Uh, and, or you can go to stogiegeeks.com forward slash live and catch us. It all happens right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And a Vintage Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Welcome to episode 311 of Stogie Geeks. I am your host, Joe Hozempa. Very happy to be here. This week, Drew and I interview Ram Rodriguez from Tabacalera El Artista. Super excited about this interview. Ram has Ram is a third generation tobacco man. He comes by the business naturally. Having spent nearly his entire childhood at the factory, while he's comfortable sitting in a boardroom and represents the company, his heart and his passion are really in the field. I want to welcome Ram to Stogie Geeks. Mr. Rodriguez, how are you, sir? All good, all good, Joe. Thank you uh, for everything. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, how was how was that intro? I was uh, uh, it was said to me that you're under thirty and all that stuff, and I think that's super <laughs> cool. But I don't even think you know it really matters on age. I'm super excited to uh, to hear your story. This is your uh, debut here on Story Geeks, and um, I was telling uh, Ram off air. I, I met him for 10 minutes while he was walking out and I was walking in and that was that a long time ago, probably three or four years ago. And so I was like, I, I know him. I met him, but I didn't talk to him. So anyway, uh, welcome to Story Geeks. We also have remote Drew, who is remote over in Texas. Look at you. You got some Story Geek swag going on in the background. Got my banner. Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm all set up for the uh, Stogie Geek uh, mobile lounge. You, you got so a we... Stogie Geek, a brand new Stogie Geeks banner, and I found an old sticker I put over yeah. here. <laughs> well, I'm jealous because your stickers are bigger than mine. Mine are like two by two. These are the old ones, yeah. Yeah, those are pretty big size, size. But I got some drink coasters coming that I, my buddy's going to make for me. Stogie Geeks so. drink coasters. That's genius. We have so to there you go. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, Drew, oh, yeah. welcome, Ram, to the show. Ram, welcome. Nice to meet you, brother. Nice meeting you too, Drew. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Very, very, uh, very. Uh, uh, becoming a very uh, fast fan of your products for sure. Yeah, actually, oh, I... actually, Ram. You know, it's you know, it's kind of funny. Drew called me yesterday, and this now he just posts sticks regular. Uh, if you follow him on Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff, he posts he posts his stuff. And he, he was, t I was telling him who we have for a guest. And he's like, I just posted one of his sticks. I go, welcome to Story Geeks. It gets weird like that. Like when you start, <laughs> it's, it's like, it's like you start to like familiarize yourself with a brand and you're not responsible for booking the interview and doing it. You're like, it just happened. So 
I want to welcome Drew officially to Story Geeks now. He's he's got a Story Geeks email, and he's starting to smoke the sticks be- before the guest shows up. Uh, it's amazing how yeah. that works out. So yeah, absolutely. You know, <laughs> yeah, I had one of your exactest exactest line. That was a. Uh, uh, I got it. Uh, had like a about four or five of them, and man, I've been smoking those. And I'm like, wow, this is a very nice uh, uh, stick for sure. So it's something that I'm looking forward to and sharing with all my followers or our followers as well, our listeners, and just giving them the 411 on that and uh, telling them where to go get it. Thank you, thank yeah. you, man. Which one is your favorite, the Maduro or the Connecticut? I like the Connecticut, and I have not. Yeah. I don't have the Maduro, so all I had was the Connecticut, actually. So, uh, but I will get that Maduro on my hands and definitely give that a spin. All right, awesome, awesome. So yeah, so it's kind of funny how that works out, you know what I mean? And 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 I have experience with the uh, the Piero Ambar and uh, the Polita. Huge fan of the Polita, and obviously the the original uh, big uh, big poppy as well so it's amazing how different sticks because i'm here in the northeast and drew's down in uh what is it is it midwest is that it is that proper yeah 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 drew uh drew's over in texas and it's amazing how we can get our hands on different sticks because the way you yeah. guys did you know uh kind of distribute stuff or the way the industry does as well so super cool you know to get two different per, uh, per perspectives from that but anyway ram i want to welcome you to the show Welcome to Stogie Geeks. Tell us how you got started, and tell us a little bit about your your family and 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 the the the, 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 the tradition, what it was like growing up and 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 being exposed to uh, to this business. All right. Well, uh, I kind of have my whole life is surrounded by by tobacco, tobacco pills, and bunch of people rolling cigars. Uh, I'm third generation. My my grandfather started the business. Uh, I started going to the factory when I was, I don't even remember. I mean, I, all I remember is that on weekends, I used to go uh, there and my father paid me one peso. Uh, <laughs> every time I go, it was my, my salary. Yep. And uh, he <laughs> kind of kept that tradition of, instead of, uh, giving me an allowance, it was more like a, like a, like a salary based on the work that I did in the factory. So, yeah, I remember playing with my cousins in the tobacco bells, climbing them on my aunts and my father screaming at us because we were going to fall from 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 those bells. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, tobacco family, man. Uh, uh, a, my sister works over there, My son of my aunts, my, my cousin. Uh, yeah, all fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. So you've always wanted. To, it was a natural transition for you to say, "Hey, I, I'm I'm gonna con- continue the the uh, tradition, right?" Oh uh, well, more or less. When okay. I was uh, ten to probably fourteen years old, I wanted to be a doctor. Okay. Until I went to a science fair and started seeing a bunch of organs in jars and stuff like that, uh, <laughs> I decided to become vegetarian for like a year. Uh, and I was like, yeah, uh, blood and those things is not for me. Sure. Um, I kind of realized that I wanted to do be, be in the tobacco industry full time <laughs> my whole life. Uh, probably after my first IPCPR when I was a uh, 17 years old, I was underage. I don't know how I was able to pull that off, but I went to my first IPCPR. Um, uh, and on that time I realized what happened with cigars after we, put it in boxes and shove it on a, on a big container for it to leave. I realized uh, this was no, not only like a product for be consumed, it's more like of a lifestyle. And uh, all the culture around the, the, the tobacco industry. Uh, and I fell in love mm-hmm. uh, after that. Uh, I realized that I wanted to, to be in the tobacco industry my whole life. Mm-hmm. That's a very good point you, that, that you bring up is that from our perspective, 
we focus from when the box gets to the store, right? When the yeah. box gets to the store, we're talking shelf talker. We're talking wrapper binder filler. We're talking about, you know, it was raised on this farm somewhere in, a for in another country. And, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, it goes in retail. We like it, don't like it, want to see more of this from this company. So we, 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 we got that marketing element, that boardroom element, that branding element, that chase, chase element you know, chase to sell the stick element, the sales element of that. And then here you are growing up and putting them in boxes and watching them drive away, right? And, and, and then you have that element of, of, of that, yeah. which, which, which it, it, it's, it's interesting because I, 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 it's great to have someone that we can interview that is really on both sides. Now, every once in a while, a blender will come in here and we'll, and we'll introduce a blender with a rep or, or an owner of a cigar. But now, like you, your your family is, is has three generations. You've you've done this. What were some of the brands, the older brands that they did, and 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 how has that transitioned to 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 your company now? So the first brands uh, we had uh, back in the fifties and seventies, uh, it was uh, named uh, Puro Cibao. Mm -hmm. uh, in the 90s, with the cigar boom, uh, we start exporting uh, cigars to the U.S. Uh, some of the brands that we had bef uh, by that time that we introduced was uh, Don Augusto, is one of them, and Cimarron, which uh, I rebranded a couple of years ago, and, and I have it on my on, uh, as one of our line. Uh, we also made a lot of private labels. That's always been a, our main business. Mm -hmm. Currently, right now, around 90% of the products we make in the factory is for, for private labels. But, yeah, the first line we sell in the U.S. was Don Augusto and Cimarron. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Like, so so take take the Story Geek listener as well as us as to, like, the options for uh, a private label. So since you're producing some of this stuff as well, like, well, what's what's that like? Like, they, they go to the factory, they decide on a particular blend, there's a process we can go through. How can I get in on some of that action, right? <laughs> okay, so the first decision you need to make is whether you want uh, some cigars from our regular production or, or, or if you're looking for something uh, you blend and create yourself. Okay. That's kind of the first and most important decision uh, when uh, it comes to a private label. Uh, if it's a, a cigar from our production, obviously you need to try a couple of them to see which one you like. You will have the limitations of on sizes, uh, mainly um, and wrappers, and you know, like there's not a lot of things that you can change out of the cigar because are basically some cigars we had in the factory, and that's it. Uh, if you want to do something from from scratch, you know, you have a crazy idea in your mind, you want to make a cigar with chili pepper and avocado inside, <laughs> why not? <laughs> there you go. So yeah, so. I always tell everybody the easiest way to, to go through that process, which is way longer versus just picking any other cigar, is to come here to the factory, uh, spend a couple of days blending cigars. The way I like to do it is starting from zero. Uh, so we start smoking every kind of leaf uh, based on the profiles you're looking for. And we start blending one with the other. And, and it goes from there. Uh it's a long process, mm -hmm. uh, but it's quite interesting and cool thing to do. Yeah, it's super cool. It's a super cool thing to do, uh, for sure. If you have the means to 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 do that, and you know, to to launch something and to create something, and and uh, yeah, uh, that that would be a, a a really super cool dream to 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 have that for sure. You know. Yeah, <laughs> that would round out my resume because I've owned a cigar shop, I've worked in a cigar shop, I've had a cigar radio show. Now I'm a host of a podcast here. I, I uh, I've I've uh, did life on the road for about nine months of uh, selling a cigar and whatnot, and I was like, oh, this is not for me. I don't like hotels and <laughs> and, and, and the highway. You know what I mean? Uh, you know. But yeah, so then I, I would make one, and then I'd, I'd be there. You go. So yeah. Absolutely, Drew. Do you have a question? No, I was just uh, I was just gonna <coughs> ask about the other the other lines. Uh, I know you got like eight different lines uh, under El Arista. Uh, so got got uh, 
got your six. So, mm. uh, those, <clears throat> so I, I can't find any of those over here in the Midwest. I don't, I don't know what's up with that. And trust me, I went around. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to ask you was the, uh, it looks like you're also tied in with this, uh, um, I'm sorry. Drew, what's the with, matter? Uh, Computer broken. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Something's wrong over here. Drew's having uh, a yeah. tough week. Uh, Drew, Drew's <laughs> well, having a tough week. They, they had a tornado over there 20 minutes from his house. So, yeah, yeah no, no, no. over and down. Oh, uh, my. My teleprompter just went down. Something I had a question lined up. But anyways, uh, about your other lines, I just wanted to see, uh, ask you about the other lines. I mean, are they are they all available here in the United States? I understand you're in Europe and other countries. I just wanted to try to uh, ask you that question. Uh, well, yeah, we have uh, Pulita, uh, Big Papi, the, uh, the Slugger, Puro Ambar, Got Your Six, Exactus, Cimarron, and Buffalo 10. I think those are our core lines mm -hmm. uh, right now in the US uh, all of them are, all are available in the in, uh, in the US market oh I forgot the, another one the, it's called a uh, made to be fogly I don't know if you guys have heard about that made to Little be cigar. made to be made, made to be, to be fogly? fogly fogly yes fogly okay yeah. all right it's a fogly <laughs> cigar but it's more free hand roll cigar with a kick yep it's quite interesting one so uh, the only ones I don't sell in the U.S. is uh, there is a third line of Cimarron that I sell only in Europe. Um, I do some regional exclusive. For example, in Norway, I sell this cigar. It's called Fettenice. Mm. Uh, yeah. And in Italy, I make a little one similar to the Tuscanello. It's more like something uh, kind of a Dominican interpretation of an of Italian cigar, okay. more or less. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yes, uh, all my core lines are available in the U.S. Mm. I'm gonna have to do some some searching to to, yeah. to to get some. The Got Your Six is interesting because uh, yeah. I know the lingo. Growing up in a military family, my father was a retired Navy and all of that, and my brother's a cop, so he always talks to me like, "Yo, man, yo, Joe, ten four, gotcha, all right, man." Like, you know, <laughs> he's my little brother. He's a cop, right? So he's always yeah. he's always ten four me and four twenty and. Or whatever it is. I don't even know what that was. The 420. Or whatever they are. I'm making up numbers. I don't even know what they mean. You know what I mean? You know, you know, so, you know. Uh, but, yeah. So, it's it's, it's kind of interesting. So, yeah. So, the Gut Your Six was for you to pay homage, right, to the uh, the military. Like, I got your back. Like, I'm covering you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Uh, it's quite an interesting interesting cigar, uh, mainly because of the combination of all the wrappers. Mm. Uh, the main one is Connecticut, but it has uh, is that like a camouflage team cigar? So you have a little bit of Maduro, natural, and candela wrapper. Uh, and while you smoke, and you can see a little bit of the transition of, of one wrapper to to the other. That's actually super cool because I went to a blending seminar or or had smoked uh, some some of the Baba poles that are traditionally you know that are straight barber poles but yours is like it's got the way it's wrapped it really looks like it, it it's camouflage so yeah. i would imagine right. that because of the elements that are in that wrapper uh and most of the flavor comes from the wrapper so the smaller the size right the more you could probably taste the transition of the particular right. wrappers yeah yes yeah so so drew if you're out to go get it you got to go with the Robusto, right? Because oh, yeah. uh, the smaller the size, because it's like, well, I don't know, 74%, that's a Joe, not a story. 74% right. of the flavor, you would probably know. The percentage of the flavor comes from the wrapper, the most yeah. of it. So if it's a smaller size and you have limited tobacco and filler, that's not really a super big ring gauge. It's only a 5x50. I would imagine that you could really, if you, if you uh, bullet cut it maybe, and slow down your smoke, and you could probably really taste the uh, transition. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I got to get my hands on some of those because I, I was looking at that as well, and I'm like, man, that's a super cool, super cool idea. Yeah. And the fact that you can blend it, and I'm imagining that if you were to put them all in the box, the camouflage would come out different as well as they're rolling yeah. it and doing that process. Yeah. Yeah. So now that we're on that stick, what made you come up with, with that line? Uh, it was my father's idea, the okay. truth. All yeah, right. uh, he always liked like military things, you know, like knives and hunting gear. And 
uh, he got this idea or uh, he ordered to, to make some little cliches to call the, 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 the tobacco and start playing himself, putting all those those little pieces to imitate like a camouflage. Mm. And he was like, yeah, man, we need to sell this. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You yeah. get like a military style hat with like a gutcha yeah. six over here and you got some swag and blow oh, it yeah. out. Let's do it. Yeah. I like it. You know what I mean? It's crazy. In Europe, gutcha six is doing very, very well. Uh, I'm actually impressed. Uh, I was not expecting like... To see a lot of sales of that in Europe, like it's not like a, there's not that much military tradition comparing to the U.S., for example. For sure. But yeah, people love it there as well. Mm. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then you you come up with this big poppy and big poppy slugger. I mean, yeah. Um, uh, Stoy geeks listen all over the world, but the ones in America certainly know who Big Poppy is for sure whether they like the Red Sox or don't like the Red Sox or whichever. Yeah. Uh, take us through that blend and that relationship and how that came about. Uh, yeah, so uh, we've been sponsoring their David's uh, Golf Tournament, the Celebrity Classic here in the Dominican for a while now. Uh, everything started um, one day during, with, during that event. Uh, he came, I saw the, the roller making a cigar, and he was like, yeah, I need a cigar just for me. Yeah, I'm lazy. I just took a cigar. Oh, this is your big David. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, he was like, no, like, seriously, I want to plant my own cigar. Uh, we make it happen. Uh, we start going back and forward to what he was looking for. Uh, one day he went to the factory. Uh, we spent a couple of hours uh, blending the cigar for him. Uh, he decided he chose the, the cigar and the size. And after that, every one or two two months, we were shipping to him a hundred, one hundred fifty cigars every now and then, uh, just for him to smoke and share with his friends. Uh, after that, uh, <coughs> uh, we started talking about the possibility of of making like a commercial line out of that blend uh, with him, obviously. And right during the spring training of his last season. Uh, I got a call from his manager. Hey, David wants to want you to go to Fort Myers to the uh, spring training field uh, to sign the contract, and that's how we did. It was actually the last uh, spring training game he had mm -hmm. uh, over there, so I was able to watch the game as well, which was a uh, Quite impressive to see all the fans over there with signs, uh, people crying literally, like "Oh, we're gonna miss you, be a big happy." <laughs> sure. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and after that, we were uh, on the contract. It says that we were only gonna be able to sell it after the season was over, after uh, the Red Sox finished his their baseball season, because during uh, while he was on contract, he was not able to do anything related to tobacco. Sure. So uh, for us, it was like, oh, we want this, to, want them to finish fast, but at the same time, you know, I'm a Red Sox fan, so yeah, it was kind of hard. Like, oh, they should lose, but they should win at the same time, you know? Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Because you have boxes waiting, and yeah, and and, and, and promotions and all of that stuff waiting to yep. to go, and and yet yeah, you know, and and, and uh, correct, that was his. They went uh, to World Series that year, right? Did they go to World Series uh, that year? Uh, Wait, what they, year was that? 16? 17? No. no? 17. Uh, seven, no, that was 16. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, no. Gotcha. I think they, they went I to the playoffs. They went to the playoffs. Yep. yep. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, but we had tons of orders from IPCPR. Uh, just waiting for them to be shipped. We have everything ready in boxes in Miami. Mm -hmm. Just waiting for their season to be over to start shipping. It was... <laughs> Quite crazy. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. And, you know, so uh, correct me if I'm wrong, David actually enjoyed that wrapper binder filler combination that you had created for him. The Ecuadorian Habano Claro, Claro wrapper, correct? Yes. With a uh, Criollo 98 binder. Yeah. And a Dominican Republic and Nicaraguan filler. Yes. Was yes. That, Now, this is my question to you. Knowing just outside of how David is, did he want to make sure that at least Dominican Republic 
it's got to be made like in the Dominican Republic and because he, he seems he seems like a very proud person never had the opportunity to meet him uh, just from a consumer observation standpoint he seems very proud to be who he is in 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 and in my opinion he carries himself uh, pretty well in regards to you know he makes he know, makes it known where his roots are and he makes it known what he likes so did he like want to stick with making sure of that or did he was he like add this take out this or did he really like the way you kind of set uh set him up so for him he wanted it to be a 100 percent dominican cigar he's very proud of his roots That's, right i totally agree with you on that uh but uh, when we talked about that it was after we already had the blend uh, that he really, really liked. And I told, hey, David, you know, we can do something new, but it's not going to be that exact blend. Yep. Uh, at the end, uh, he kind of understood that, uh, you know, uh, uh, yes, we have some Ecuadorian and some uh, Nicaraguan tobaccos. Most of the tobacco inside is Dominican anyways. Uh, so he really, since he really enjoyed that blend, uh, we decided to stick with it. Mm -hmm. I, but like yes. Like for if, him, it was very important, you know. Like yep. uh, that's why even on the on the on the on the ring, if you check on the back, it says "Orgullo Dominicano," Dominican pride. Yeah, uh, that was something that he decided that we should put in there. Right, back there. right. Like if I were your business partner, right, and then we were in a room or, or at Fort Myers, and he says it has to be a uh, hundred percent Dominican, I would pull him aside and say, "Hey, David, you know, not for nothing." If we put this this Nicaraguan in here and this Criollo ninety eight, it's gonna taste a little bit better than being straight Dominican, right? Yeah. Uh, let, let, we 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 should kind of go with this, right? Because then we can go cater to a bigger audience. And I'm sure, okay, okay, as long as it's the I, I I would imagine it went that way. Just just from having worked with sports people in my past, how they are, they're very upfront as to what they want and yeah. and what's important with them. With my experience doing sports promotion and whatnot in, in my radio years, uh, I could imagine that David would, would want that and you had to pull him aside and say, I think we should go with this. I've had the Big Poppy, all right? It's available in one size. My original comment, I've had it, I've said it here on Stogie Geeks. I've said it on, on my radio show when it, when it was on the, the beginning of the coming out and whatnot and whatnot. I'm surprised that he went with, with that size. I understand he's big. It's big poppy. It's in the name. I'm surprised you, you, that they didn't want to go like a little bit because I'd be interested in how that blend is if, if the cigar was just a little bit smaller. I bet you mm. it, would, it, would, it would have a little bit different <clears throat> characterization. And the reason why I'm just asking you this is because now you come up with the big slugger, so it's an even bigger ring gauge, and it's an even <laughs> bigger version of that cigar, you know? So uh, he didn't. He just wanted one size, and 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 wanted it to be that that bigger cigar to mimic what what he likes. Or or are there any future works of of making that uh, a, a scotch smaller? So when we start uh, making cigars for David, it was on his like when he was introducing himself to the the experience of a smoke a cigar. Yep. Uh, at the end, uh, he realized, and we also did, that he likes that size. Yeah. Uh, he likes a, a 54 by 6. Uh, so when we were talking about the commercial line, uh, we wanted we wanted to be something that really, really represents David Ortiz. Yep. Uh, that's why we decided, uh, yeah, we talked about having different sizes and everything. But at the end, we decided, like, you know, uh, this is something that really represents David. Uh, it should be the size that he always asked for, which is the 54 uh, by 6. Yep. Uh, with the slogger, kind of the same thing happened. Uh, uh, he been smoking different cigars from us all the time. And uh, he told me, I, I, I want a bigger cigar. I was, yeah, let's, let's make a bigger cigar, David, you know? And actually, I have tried the, the David Ortiz blend on a smaller ring gauge, on a Panetella. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Uh I, 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 oh I've always said yeah. that. I've always said that if you go back on Story Geek's history, if I pull up my old radio archive, I says if this cigar was a little bit smaller, it would be an amazing tasting cigar. Not not that there's anything wrong with that. I just with, with its current size. I just because 
with the with with that with that six by what uh, uh fifty four, with that six by fifty four size, I was like, I don't know, like it sounded like uh, it sounded like I'm sorry, it tasted like the blend. Um, the blend was 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 just if it was a little bit smaller, it would it just left me wanting more. That's all. Yeah, uh, we also intentionally we decide to uh, make the cigar just as David liked it. Uh, when he started smoking that cigar, uh, he was being introduced uh, 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 to the cigar experience. So it was like you know very medium, you know, mm -hmm. uh, not not extremely intense. So uh, that's why we we just decide to stick with the with the original thing. Yep, yep. And now this big slugger. No, I'm, yeah, the slugger. I'm sorry, uh, the David Ortiz slugger. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. The uh, it's the slugger by Big Poppy. Um, yes. Yep. It's the slugger by by. Big, you use the Mexican San Andreas wrapper. That's interesting, right? Uh, for yeah. that size, because um, I've, I, I'm I'm gonna get some next door. Uh, I do have access to them over at the uh, sponsor, Havana Cigar Shop. Uh, and then you use a uh, Dominican Negrito binder with, again, Dominican, uh, some, some USA filler in there, and some, mm -hmm. some Nicaragua. Is that USA from, from Connecticut or from Pennsylvania? Or can you from disclose? Pennsylvania. From Pennsylvania, Broadleaf. yep. Okay, yep. Yeah. yep. It's, 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 so it's a Pennsylvania broadleaf. So not having smoked it yet, and... It's ring size. It's got to be a little bit spicier on the palate. Is that correct? Then, then yes. The, yep, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, it's a little bit spicier, uh, a little bit more intense, more flavor. Uh, it's kind of like a evolution of 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 David's uh, palate. Let's say mm -hmm. uh, he really enjoys the slogger. He's been actually. I don't know if you guys have seen the video with uh, with A Rod smoking the cigar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna go there. I was gonna go there too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, he during when he goes to these kinds of of events, he always uh, tells me to ship him cigars to wherever he's at. Uh, this year, I was like, yeah, sure, I'm gonna send you some big puppies. He was like, yeah, keep it short on that one. Make sure to bring to send me enough uh, sloggers. Uh, yeah, he's uh, smoking that that new blend uh, like crazy lately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. I mean, if 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 I had a choice, just going from the description of what I've smoked from the Big Poppy, just to the description of the Slugger, right? Uh, no, that Mexican San Andreas and the combination of Dominican and Nicaraguan for sure. Then you add a little bit of your Pennsylvania. Uh, mm. I'm like saying that that's gonna be super spicy, uh, spicier. That, than the original one, I can see where he would probably gravitate towards that. Plus, his, his palate is is going is 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 getting there, you know, in regards to his experience, and he knows what he likes, you know. Uh, yeah. So the cigar that he pulled out on the fame, because because uh, people were emailing me. I don't know if they contacted you, Drew, but they emailed me over at Joe H at uh, StogieGeeks.com, where they were like, "Oh, did you see the David Ortiz clip where he smoked a cigar with A Rod and whatnot?" and I don't know. I was like, yeah. I mean, I was watching the, the, the series and whatnot. Like, you know, what do you think he smoked? I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, freaking email, you know, I don't know what he smoked. I didn't even think that he would be uh, smoking his stick. And I didn't even know at the time that he was having the uh, slugger. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure this might happen, like, especially when you're doing any type of celebrity branding, right, f f from a company perspective. Um you know, David's personality is big, right? I mean, let's you could take you could take the Red Sox out of it, right? And just David Ortiz as a person, he he he's, he he has one of the, like when he walks into a room, he, he seems like a super fun guy. Uh, he, he commands attention. He does that. Let alone his star power. What's it like to work with someone of that caliber? When historically you you've kind of uh, been doing private labels and over the seas and then you know over the seas meaning you know Europe and stuff like that, uh, and then all of a sudden you have star power in regards to like someone like like David. What has that done for the company uh, and the company's uh, branding process for you? Uh, so it really helped us a lot to. 
uh, be more a little bit more exposed. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it started making the cigar for for David kind of mark uh, what was before and what is now with Artista. Um, I'm very very happy it, uh, to be part of 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 this team uh, uh, with David. Uh, honestly, at first. Uh, before you know doing all this blending with him and all that, uh, I was a little bit uh, scared, like not scared, like a little bit nervous, you know, like sure. oh, I'm gonna be dealing with this uh, <laughs> a, a famous guy, you know. But uh, David is such a cool people, you know, he's mm -hmm. a, such, a, such a cool person that uh, it's so it's just so easy, you know. Uh, he's not the kind of person that if if you need something from him, you have to call the assistant of the assistant of the assistant of the manager or something like that. I have David on the phone. Hey, David, uh, can you? I send somebody to sign some boxes for uh, this store in I don't know in Florida, whatever. Um, he's so cool. He's uh, it's so easy to to deal with that you'll be amazed. Uh, most of the business we have done is been in, in his in his house, uh, either the one in 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 Boston or now the the new one in Miami. Uh, he's just that kind of person, you know, like he's not like on personal or anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, he's very warm. Oh yeah, yeah, you yeah. can totally tell. Like and, yeah. and and Red Sox Nation had taken to 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 him, and uh, you know as. Uh, uh, a player, I mean, his his bats are were, were amazing when he was there, and now I think it's super cool that that he's a commentator. Now I know this is tough for me to say. I am a Yankee fan. Full full disclosure, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm a Yankee fan. It just it is what it is, okay? <clears throat> Watching David Ortiz versus A Rod commentating, I much prefer David Ortiz's perspective. Right, oh, yeah. and and it's tough yeah. for me to it's tough for me to say, but you know something, uh, it, it is what it is. Like A Rod postseason batting one eighty six, David Ortiz when he was postseason he was clutch, and, and, and that's just the way it goes, you know. And and yeah. so uh, that's it for sports talk, unless Drew has anything to add. But it's like it's like I love David Ortiz's perspective as opposed to A Rod. He talks about well, you know, when the guy's in the batter's box, he's got to put his left foot forward. He's got to dig deep in order to pull that ball to right to right field. I'm like, dude, bro, you you didn't pull sh crap in, in the postseason <laughs> as a Yankee. You pulled nothing, right? You batted 186. You were completely useless, and I don't even know why the Yankees even bought you. But anyway. All right, I'm done with, with with my rant. I'm happy David is where he is. I hope that Fox keeps him, and I, I love his perspective. You know what I mean? And he always ties it back to like his roots. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. know, yeah. it's like it's time. like you know, like if you ever meet like someone who's who's Armenian or you you know, he's so proud of his heritage and where he's from and 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 there, and it's just super cool to see. You know, for sure. Drew, yeah. you have anything to add? I've been hogging all the time. I apologize. No, no, no. I was just going to say, you know, uh, looking at the big slugger, I mean, look at looking at the cigar line. I mean, it's 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 it, it is David Ortiz. I mean, when you look at that stick, you know, it's a beautiful stick. It's well constructed. I mean, everything is just beautiful about it. And it's just and and, and even the band. I mean, I'm a big band fan. I, I love the cigar bands that that are that are done for the cigars. And I'll tell you, uh, to I can't wait to get my hands on that uh, 60 by 7 uh, cigar and, and enjoy it. And I understand what he's saying. You know, sometimes, I mean, I don't have a big hand like David does, but sometimes I just love the feel of that big, you know, 60 uh, ring gauge, you know, in my hand. I mean, it feels good, um, you know, and, and, and you're enjoying the cigar. You know, you, you, you definitely want to, you know, be in that moment. And so when you're in that cigar, you're with David, for sure. Yep. So this yeah. year, IPCPR, Ram, you came out with the, sl the, the Slugger and the Buffalo 10. Yes. Right? Yeah. Take us through the Buffalo 10. So the Buffalo 10 uh, is a cigar that I've been overwhelmed of uh, uh, because of how many people has been showing interest on it. Uh, we were looking for half a cigar, a... Uh, at a very affordable price point. 
uh, but uh, outstanding quality. Um, I'm very proud and happy to say that I think we were able to achieve it. Uh, the Buffalo 10 uh, is a cigar that uh, have a lot of special things. Uh, the most special thing for me, I think it is the uh, the binder it has, the Negrito binder. Mm. Uh, we were talking a little bit uh, 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 before about uh, smaller the ring gauge, uh, more you can taste out of the wrapper, but the binder as well. Uh, mm. In this cigar, particular cigar, is a box press. Uh, right now it's only one size. Uh, we decide to make it a box press, especially because we want people to enjoy that taste of that binder. When you make a box press, the amount of fillers inside is way less versus a regular shaped cigar because, you know, you need a little bit of space for, to handle all the press. Uh, so you can really enjoy uh, the sweetness uh, of the Dominican Negrito tobacco. Um, that tobacco is uh, one kind that has some special place on my heart. Uh, we have a couple of years uh, working with that particular tobacco. Uh, this uh, the negrito uh, used to be very popular back in the 50s and 60s, mm-hmm. uh, but it lost popularity over easier to grow tobaccos here on the island. Uh, we spent a couple of years trying to bring it back. Uh, we had some very good results. Uh, we used it as wrapper on the pulita, and on the buffalo ten we use it as 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 binder. Uh, is extremely sweet uh, with a hint of, of pepper. Uh, uh, for me, honestly, uh, if you see my humidor, I have a like a cigar caddy on my car, stuffed with with, with Buffalo Ten. That's that's my my, my cigar uh, right now. The one that I that I love smoking all the time. Mm-hmm. What do you like most about the Dominican uh, the Dominican Negrito? Like what? Because I've noticed a the theme, right? You've 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 launched. The slugger uh, with with the Mexican San Andreas wrapper, uh, and then this Buffalo Ten in that combination. That's an interesting combination. That I personally I'm familiar with the with them, but like that actual combo. Uh, what do you like about it? Uh, the San Andreas with the Negrito goes along so well uh, that for me it's just perfect. Um, what I like so much about the Negrito uh, is like. The taste is, is just uh, so so hard to describe that I love it. Uh, I don't know you guys, but when I'm smoking a cigar, for me, a perfect cigar, it's a cigar that blows my mind. Yep. That, make, that makes me start thinking, like, what the hell does this cigar have that, that tastes so different? Uh, yep. For me, that yep. Negrito tobacco has that, that thing. But the craziest thing about the Negrito is that you need to know how you're going to blend it because the tobacco by itself is just like... Uh, I don't know, taking some bread and just adding cat ketchup, uh, and that's it. Yeah, taste <laughs> ketchup is good, but come on, like you take a shot of that thing, it's gonna taste horrible. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Is so if you know how to play around with that negrito, you can get some very good cigars, and I think that's what we achieve with the with the Buffalo Ten. Mm. Yeah, I gotta do some some searching to get some 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 of your line in that that uh, Gotcha Six. The Buffalo Ten and the Slugger. Uh, yeah, like I said, I went next door, but I'll do some 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 lurking around and then get my hands on some of those for sure. Uh, interesting. Now you kept the price point lower and uh, on the Buffalo Ten, right? Was was that was that intentional? Um, cause cause there are a lot of sticks out there uh, that uh, have a lower price point. Um, two come to mind: the Chatter Oak. And uh, by foundation, and the brick house by the uh, J.C. Newman. I have wicked medicine head. I apologize. I've been sick all week, so like Me I'm too. like I, 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 I've, I've had like <laughs> I, I am like I, I got like thoughts in my head, right? I'm like, why can't I freaking think, right? It's like, <laughs> but today's the first today's the first day that I'm like off the medicine, and I, it's like I'm worse. You know what I mean? Not worse. <laughs> Cold wise, I'm on the mend, but I'm like, oh my god. So, so I apologize for that. I'm like, why? It's like I got thoughts in my head. But like, so you know, when you made that price point lower, was was that intentional to package that up, or you do you just base it upon cost of operation? This is what's gonna be, you know, because because I know that from interviewing um, blenders and owners or managers or salespeople, whoever here on the Story Geek show. 
when it comes to price, you got a little bit of flexibility to say, you know, is it going to be that $10 stick? Is it going to be that $12 stick? Some of the boutiques tend to go to that $15, $20 stick. You, you know, what, what was your intention there? And, and the reason why I'm, I'm shining a light on that is because I'm starting to see uh, more companies produce other stuff stay within the range and you know the range that can sell because you know your clients but trying to get uh at a lower price stick yeah so this cigar we first blended mm -hmm. uh, but uh, since the beginning we were aiming to uh affordable price point okay uh we were uh, trying to get a cigar that they help us open more doors than the ones we currently have uh to be honest with you uh we have some rules in the factory, right? Okay. Uh, uh, some costing rules that we need to follow. Uh, I can break those rules, but at the end, I'm not the real boss. My, the boss is my father. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> I was working, checking all the numbers. Uh, I had to sit down with him. Uh, Kevin, uh, uh, Kevin Newman, my national sales director, was with me, with me here. And we were just trying to see, hey, man, we need to achieve that price point. Yep. Uh, we sit down with the with El Jefe, uh, show him what we were looking for, and he was like, "Yeah, let's do it." Uh, a little bit lower than what we uh, uh, the factory usually gets out of this kind of cigar, but I think it's totally worth it because a lot of people are enjoying it and uh, talking about it. So I think we are getting the results we are we were aiming to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, especially. You, you know, from a business perspective, you have somewhat of that control to say, okay, we're going to launch this product and what is it going to be, right? And, you know, some base it upon cost of operation and move forward because the factory needs this, we need this, and that's it. Others you, you can kind of pl uh, play around with there. Um, but you, you've, used, you've used Mexican San Andreas wrapper, and I know I'm hyper-focusing on that, um, <laughs> but, like, that's not cheap stuff to really – experiment with and, and to go with so it, it, it proves that you know you you, you really have a, a commitment to open up doors with a particular product you know yeah yeah uh it's not a cheap uh, san andres is a little bit a uh, uh, hard to handle tobacco yes uh, but it was totally worth it i think it's the perfect combination um uh, we we're so happy with the results that i think that it was worth it mm -hmm. yep and then you know you worked around with the packaging so it's available in five count or or singles and i th i think it's going to open up a lot of doors for you for sure yeah you know thank you yeah yeah that's awesome uh how'd you get the name of some of of some of the cigars as we kind of round up this interview like obviously the big poppy is easy we we get it right yeah we, <laughs> that's easy you know you're not gonna call it the you know uh anything else but right but but how did you get the yeah. name uh like i got your six uh you know um the the exactus and the buffalo 10 like if you could take us through, through some of those like when you're coming up with a name obviously yeah. you you had to because you launched you launched it at 2019 ipcpr so yeah. uh well on the buffalo 10 uh, this one in particular uh it was we were brainstorming on a name mm -hmm. and we were planning to have like a 10 pack okay so we really like the name buffalo 10 at the end we realized how cool it looks in a five pack but we decided to stick with the name there's yep. no strong meaning behind it no that's fine no, no. <laughs> i expected yeah, you, you I, ram i expected you to say you know we were we were driving down the road and we saw 10 buffaloes in the field, and, and we just said, we're going to call it the Buffalo 10. You know what I mean? I just, you know. <laughs> yeah. So it could have been the Buffalo 5, but you just decided to do it. Yeah, that doesn't sound cool, man. Right, right, Come on, right. Buffalo 5? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, but, you know, <laughs> you know. Um, the Polita, I, I'm a fan of that cigar. Thank when you, that, yeah. when that When that cigar came out, I, I remember because when I had access to that, I had access to the Polita and the original Big Big Poppy. And like again, like I said, why can't they make the Big Poppy in this size? But that Polita, uh, it was the 60th anniversary. You you paid homage to the generations in, in the factory there. Uh, if, if you could take us through that, how's that cigar sales wise? Is that like the most popular? 
Uh, in some areas it is. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, in in some countries in particular, uh, like in in Norway, uh, Sweden, and a couple of, of other countries in Europe, they, they, that's uh, one of the most popular brand. Uh, in the U.S., it's not the number one. Okay. Uh, like the most popular one, but uh, it, it has a very good fan base. Uh, uh, everybody tells me the same feedback. They really like the cigar. Uh, I feel very happy when I hear that uh, first because uh, Pulita was the nickname of my grandfather. Okay. Uh, we needed to commemorate our, our uh, 60th anniversary, so uh, there was a lot of uh, effort uh, for us to, to make that. We started uh, five years before uh, working in order to create that blend, so it's, it's something very, very special for us. Mm -hmm. uh, what I liked about that stick, it wasn't over, it wasn't strong. Right, I would say it's 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 a for my palate, it's a barely medium. Right, I put it in the medium category yeah. for for a beginner smoker. But you know, for for an experienced smoker, I'd say it's kind of like a barely medium. But it's super tasty. It's super tasty, yeah. and for its size, I had the robusto size, the five by fifty. Uh, it's pretty complex. And again, the wrapper, you have your negrito, and then you have the the, the binder, your Dominican Cre uh, Creole ninety eight. And then your fillers, you got some from Nicaragua, Colombia, Pennsylvania, and Dominican Republic. So yeah. it, 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 it is a pretty complex, but it, it kind of reminds me of like an old school smoke. You know what I mean? Like it, it's, it, mm. it's like, you know, when, when you're looking for, I want something that's pretty complex, but mild, right? M mild on the palate, but complex in, in complex on the palate. You can tell it's got some super cool things going on. Uh, that's definitely a, a, a good stick to gravitate to, for sure. Yeah, and actually, uh, funny you say that, but that was our main intention. Okay. Uh, when we were blending this cigar, uh, we started checking all the blend lists of cigars we used to make back in the, in the 50s and 60s. Um, that's why we decided to go with this particular blend. Uh, it's something that resembles what a cigar used to be back back then in those in those times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and and, mm -hmm. and and that's what I think about. That's super cool. If you take the big poppy and put it separate, your blends that I've been exposed to they remind me of old school blends. That's all. Yeah, it's old school blends, which th there is a market for that, you know, because. <laughs> Here on Stogie Geeks, and especially 2017, 2018, maybe 2016, it's I want new, 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 boutique, boutique, boutique. So you were in that realm, right, of the newer sticks that were yeah. out and going over there. And then you have it, and you're like, whoa, this is different. And consumers are either going to be like, this is different, I don't like it, because it's not pepper, because everything's pepper, 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 yeah. right? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just telling them how it is, right? I'm just, because yeah. when I go to shops, you know, people ask me all the time, well, have you had this? Have you had that? Story Geeks always email me, you know, have you had this? Or, you know, do you recommend this stick? Or what goes with this for pairings and stuff like that? And, and, and when I have your stuff, it's like it, it kind of takes me back. That's all. It takes me back to, 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 to the way things used to be, which I'm old school, so uh, it works. I do like pepper, don't get me wrong. You know, I'm a fan of Black Label, uh, the, 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 the Black Label, uh, Black Studio Works, and where they're going and whatnot. I do like the pepper, but every once in a while, I like something that's mildly tasty, you know? And, and that, to me, a cigar that can stop me in my tracks that was one of the ones that, that actually worked for, for, for me. And, and when I do my Stogie Geeks reviews, uh, the ones that get a higher rating are the ones that stop me, just like you, when you say, hey, I want to know what's in this thing and, and what's going on, you know? And, yeah. And that's what it did for me. So that's my two cents. Drew, you have a final question? No, what I was gonna I was gonna elaborate on that, what you guys were saying. Uh, some of the guys I talked to you about the Polito line, uh, you know, last couple of days, they were telling me that they remember, you know, the cigar always being a true classic cigar in the sense of, you know, retro back in the. They could remember their grandfather smoking mm -hmm. the tacos, yeah. uh, you know, back then. And so uh, reminiscence of that, it's, it's definitely a, it's got a classic. To it. And so, you know, having the. the um uh, I'm 50, so uh, even myself, 
to, to taste that, uh, to, I mean, I want to taste that. I haven't tasted it yet, but, uh, to, to just, just hearing the description of it and hearing the, the story surrounding that and visit that. And, and I'm pretty sure quite a few of our listeners would are definitely going to search that out and, and get that, uh, that, uh, that line in their hands for yeah, sure. Absolutely. So, so Ram. What's what's next for you? Are you coming up with some new stuff for for IBCPR or whatever the heck it's called, 2020? Whatever it's gonna PCA, uh, uh, PCA, Cigar Con. Uh, uh, that, that's another show, right? I want to get like 20 of you guys all on at once and just say it's gonna be the easiest Stoy Geeks episode ever. What do you think about the name change? And you guys all go. Oh! You got, you got, it's going to be like, you remember like wrestling? I'm not a big wrestling fan, but I remember when I was little, like 12 years old, they have like the, when they get like 10 guys, 10, 20 guys in the ring, and if they throw them out, you royal battle, yeah. battle royale, right? When they do that, you know, I, it, that's how that episode's going to be. You know what I mean? We like it. <laughs> but anyway, regardless of IPCPR or whatever the heck it's called, um, what's coming up new for you? Like, you know, other than your private label stuff and, and stuff like that, I, 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 you, do you have any plans to, to release some some new stuff for IPCPR or for next year? Uh, yes, we are actually uh, have a couple of months already blending of what the uh, what will come for IPCPR. Uh, one of the things we are definitely gonna do is to have a line extension to the Buffalo Ten line, mm. uh, and we have another some other projects that we're still analyzing. Awesome. Uh, we usually do two releases every year. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, definitely keep in touch with us. If you have any product announcements or anything you want us to announce us on the show, you have my email for sure. And we'll All right, get it out there. Thank you very much, Joe. Awesome, awesome. Ram Rodriguez, thank you for appearing on Stogie Geeks. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ram. You, both of you guys. And uh, Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Yes. It was fun. Best of luck. And if you ever want to do a promo or anything, if you're ever in company with David Ortiz and he wants to come on open microphone, uh, I, as a Yankee fan, I would love to talk to David Ortiz to, uh, to, to, to talk a little baseball for sure, you know, for sure. And, and that would be a, probably a long episode uh, and, and a fun episode. But if you ever can make that happen, uh, that, would, that would be su uh, super cool. You know? All right. Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. Awesome. So sounds good. Ram, thank you very much for your time. Stogie Geeks, when we come back, Drew and I will talk about Sticks of the Week and what we've been smoking. Stay tuned.